Well, thanks so much for joining me. And and as always, we're here to discuss a really interesting business topic. And we've got someone great on that topic as well. The topic I want to look at today is more and more businesses are thinking about scaling, about growing their operations, about making more impact in the world. And frequently, what we hear people saying is, well, how can I do that with team members? Should I be using virtual assistants or VAs, or are there other ways that I should be looking at it? And one of the reasons that I'm so excited uh, about our time together today is that I'm joined by a man who has the answers to those questions and many more, because that's what he does at an organization called VA Plantman. Uh, Brian Jones, welcome, Brian, great to see you. Hello, Paul, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. So um, in that, in that introduction I, I mentioned that normally when I come across people who are talking about VAs is it okay if we use the term VAs and virtual yep. VAs, is good. VAs is good um, it's because they're at least my said they're looking to scale the business but is that the only reason or is that the main reason people come to you these days no it's probably the lesser reason um, really? to scale their business um, we do have our tagline of scale up with skilled staff, but we find that whenever we get into the nitty gritty of the conversation around the person's real heart, their reason for coming to us in the first place, right. it always boils back down to something more intrinsic. So, you know, I've had one person who said, look, Brian, I, I've got my family, I've got two children, I've got another one on the way. I haven't had a a stamp in my passport with my family for over five years. Um, I'll I'll know this is successful when I have that passport stamp in my passport with my family. And that's when I know that we've worked well together. Um, I've had others come and say, look, to be honest, my marriage isn't going well. And it's, it's because I'm working too many long hours. I'm doing everything. I'm coming to you because I want my marriage to succeed. Um, so yeah. I get a lot from those conversations, often more than when people say, look, I just want to grow my business. It's like, why? What's what's in it for you, really, to, just, <laughs> to scale? So, uh, you know, it's, so it's good. Interesting. That is so interesting. So it's, it's, it's almost like you're kind of like a psychiatrist sometimes or a psychologist, right, when you're doing it. Oh, I, think, I think I enjoy my work more when I really understand someone's underlying reasons for why they're getting in touch in the first place. Um, Like I get, I think we're we're all very similar. We all want reciprocity in some way. And and for me, if I really understand why someone's coming to talk with me and to seek my guidance and I can help them, I I get so much passion and joy and energy from that. But if they just said they want to grow their business, mm, it's really hard to get behind that. Okay, that's yeah. fascinating. That's fascinating. Can I ask, what was it that led you to specialise in this area? Mm, backstory. Okay, bit of backstory is that um, my wife and I had our child. We've only got one, but we had our child. And I was literally working 60, 70 hours a week. Uh, to be a bit vulnerable here, I, I even a few nights, I'd wake up sweating, like dripping with so much sweat <laughs> with stress and anxiety from my business, I'd have to get out of bed, lay some towels down on the bed and then hop back in and go back to sleep. And, you know, I read a couple of books and they recommended hiring virtual team members, um, specifically in the Philippines. And I thought, great, I'll give that a go. And within 18 months of doing that, um, I, I'd literally gone from the 60, 70 hours a week down to 30 minutes a month in my business. You know, it, it, it was that, a that's uh, I, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but that's a pretty big percentage right there. <laughs> yep, it was a big change. It, it was within 12 months, I went down to one day a week. Wow. And then that in that next six months, to take me to 18 months, I was able to get it from one day a week down to 30 minutes a month. Um, and, you know, I took three years off. We traveled in the caravan with my wife and I started investing to startups. I opened a gym. I built an app for vegans. Um, but none of it was fulfilling. So my wife said, look, why don't you just go and help a couple of people who have asked for your help in building virtual teams, building systems, get their life back on track because these people really had pain in their life that they weren't going in the direction they hoped. 
Um, so I did that and I loved it. I helped these three, these three business owners and I absolutely fell in love with it. I then took another three month trip away. And when I came back, I went, I'm going to, this is it. I think this is my calling. This is my mm-hmm. purpose. If I can leave this life, helping as many business owners as possible, achieve what I achieved or better, then I'll be happy. Wow. That's such, that is such a, such a great story. I'm wondering then when, when, when people reach that moment, you know, when you said you were lying on the towels or whatever it was you say, what is it that might stop them saying, oh, you know, I need to seek a, a virtual assistant? What, I mean, because you it's, described a pretty powerful scene right there. Mm. I, I've heard every reason that people might give. I guess they could say, well, I could do it faster myself, you know, rather than trying to <laughs> train someone else up and it might take me an hour to train them i could have done it myself in five or ten minutes yeah. uh, but of course in that case they're missing the point of course they can do it faster themselves of course but once they can train someone else up to do it which does take some time instead of them taking five minutes every day to do something someone else is doing that for them in five minutes once they're skilled and trained and they add up that amount of time over the course of one year two years three years that's massive they're getting yeah correct um another big one is trust you know they they, they've heard about hiring vas they want to hire vas um but they don't trust the process they don't trust that the va is going to be there they might run away with their their information they might Mm -hmm. just work for a month and then disappear and because it's virtual they can't find them um well, at least, at least in some models they can't find them, but obviously not in the, right. model, the model that you're, you're with. So no, but, no, not with us. <laughs> not. So, so uh, just thinking about that, though, let me try and put myself, uh, you know, uh, uh, as, uh, with, with our audience right now, who may well be thinking about this. And there's all for whatever reason, there's like a barrier, right? And one of those, one of the, well, prob- probably, and one of those barriers mm. might be, well, how do I do it? Like. What are, what are the first tasks I should I, I should give? What's what's your uh, where do you go on that one? This is a, almost like a bit of a misstep that people make, Paul. Um, ah, look, okay. uh, to, to cut straight to it, the, what I would tell any new person looking at working with VAs for the first time is find the five tasks that you hate doing the most. <laughs> so, 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 so don't look at. Don't look at what they could do. Don't try and drip feed this person new work. Find those five tasks you hate doing and train them on that because as soon as you offload those five tasks to someone else, this weight lifts off your shoulders, off your chest. You're a new person. You've probably got energy at the end of your work day because you're no longer dragging your body and your mind and your feet and your heart through the day doing these tasks you hate doing. And, and so once you once you've decided that, what's the next thing that you do? Obviously, uh, you know the next thing we would love them to do is call you at VA Platinum, and we'll talk about that in, in just a while. But but what's what's the you know what sort of questions should should they be asking the the, the VA in in order so that the VA is you know fitting in culturally and so on and so forth. I love your question. This is another misstep that people would often make. And this is why we have clients that come to us saying, I've tried hiring outsourced staff. It just doesn't work. And often what they do is they look for skills. So they go to an online job marketplace and they try and filter Mm -hmm. for someone's skills that they can perform. Got it. Whereas that's the last thing you want to do in that. You want to do that. You want to do it last in the process. The first thing you need to be doing when you're looking for a team member is find someone that you would literally take home and have bring them to your family dinner on a Sunday night or a Friday night and somebody that you would enjoy and you think your family would enjoy having conversation with. Wow. If if you don't have that connection with a virtual team member, they're not going to last long because if you lack that connection over the virtual world, they'll try and find another job elsewhere or you won't give them the love, the attention that they deserve in, in working with you. So, so then how, how at VA Platinum do you, do you solve that? Presumably you have like a, 
some sort of process, right, which, which people oh. would go through. Just, just talk us through that so we could feel really comfortable with it. Okay. And, and anyone could use this themselves. They don't have to come to VA Platinum. Like, I'm hoping the reason why we're talking, Paul, is that anyone could do this and replicate what we do at VA Platinum. If people want to use this, they can, but That's cool. I really want to answer this in the way that people could do this themselves. Um, so, look, the first thing, that, like, we've got six steps, really, that we take people through. Of course, we look at resumes to ensure that the people do have the background. Um, but the first, the, the, the real important thing that we do next is we hop on the phone and we, we interview them over the phone to see if they're interesting people. And it's usually only a five to 15 minute call. But can they just talk to us like we're normal human beings and laugh, engage, tell a story? If they're too stilted over the phone, then we know that we probably wouldn't want them in anyone's business. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing they do is do a two hour testing. Now the testing is usually specific to the type of work or the business that they're going to work for. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing engineering and they have to use CAD, then they'll be doing testings on CAD. If it's um, a mm -hmm. chat feature backwards and forwards, then we do that testing. Then they actually have a face-to-face -face interview with a lead recruiter in our business. And that could go for one hour, it could go for two hours. Um, well, some more could testing. I, could I just say, I'm, I'm, I'm well, really stunned by the depth of what probably you're talking too long. about. Yeah. Not at all, no, it's just, it's uh, just a, a stunning process. Keep, keep going, it's really great. Okay. Um, we might do for, further testing after that if something comes out of the interview. Um, then after that, uh, they would meet either myself or one of my um, other you know, sales leaders or my general manager. Because what we're looking for here is we want to make sure that they're not putting me as a CEO of a company up on a pedestal. We want them to treat me just like a normal person that showers, eats, <laughs> goes to the toilet, Paul. Like we're all human, we're all the same. And we wanna make sure that they can just have a normal conversation with me like a normal human being. Um, if they get stilted and, and sort of st stop talking the way they were talking to the recruiter, we know that they might not be a good fit. Right. Um, and then if they pass the test with me, then of course they would be interviewed by the end business owner who's going to work with that person full time. Sounds great. And I suppose one of the things you, you, you just, you know, there's, I mean, there's real depth in what you just said. Um, do, does that cut both ways? Like, would you, let's say it was me that was, would you uh, go through a process where you, you basically make sure that, you know, that I'm going to do the right thing as well? Absolutely. Uh, we always, we're always pitching, aren't we? Like in every conversation, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're on the buying end or the selling end. Um, the person selling still has to want to sell to the person that's buying, um, especially when it comes to humans being involved. Um, I'm always testing and measuring in every conversation with a new business owner. Are they really the right fit to hire virtual team members? Because from a cultural point of view, you never want to be in a position where someone's being treated poorly. Um, and for me, I, I want there to be an even distribution. I want the business owner to get the real value they're looking for. Mm. But equally, I want the team member to also get the equal value that they're looking for in their relationship. Totally. Mm, totally. And if it's a mismatch, there's no point in encouraging a business owner to go down the path where they're probably not going to treat the team member the way they should and therefore they won't get the result they want. So. So with that in mind, then let's imagine that those those two things kind of work out well. What's mm. and, and as you were saying, you want people to be able to use this for themselves, irrespective of you know of what what you're doing. Um, so what is, what's that first interface look like? What should we be as the potential hirer, if you like, of the of the VA? What what should we be focusing on in those in those first weeks or, or even the first day? Sure. Um, so again, there's a process, of course. So Paul, we've got over 700 documented systems on how we guide business owners through and how we guide new virtual assistants through the process together. Did you say 700? Is that what you said? Over 700. Yes, <laughs> over 700. Wow. And yeah. Uh, so we really like to hold, you know, the client's hand on over here and the VA's hand here. And we, we take them through this process where on say on the first day, 
we talk about culture. So we talk about you know, the business owner, number one, what cult, who are they? You know, not just in business, but who are they as a human being? Hmm. Do they support you know, organizations like B1G1? Do they support their local kids, you know, footy? You know, what do they do in their personal time? Because team members in the Philippines, especially, they like to fall in love with who they're going to work with. Um, if you're that, thinking that, that America- is, that, is so, that is so cool, that's just so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Aussie, America, UK, you don't talk about yourself in an interview as a, as a business owner or a boss, it, because the candidate will think, this guy, all he did was talk about himself. Right. In, in the Philippines, they really only want to work for someone that they believe in. That's so, that's so interesting. And because and, the thought that occurs to me, yeah, the thought that occurs to me out of that is we, we tend to think, don't we, of VAs as like transactional, right? That's, that's how we think. But what you're saying is it's more than that. It's like relationship. It's, you know, we're, we're part of it, if you will. So with, with that in mind, do you, do, you, do you see circumstances where, you know, someone will hire a VA for, you know, ABC, but actually what happens is there are other things happening as a result of that? Totally. Totally. Paul, 95% of the businesses that come to us say the VA that we're hiring or the VA team, they're never going to talk to our clients. You know, never. And I'm like, I've got to tell you up front <laughs> that flip, flip that, 95% of our clients who have been with us for longer than six months have got their VA or the VA teams talking directly with their clients. <laughs> you know, you're going to be amazed. And, and I think that's the biggest surprise that business owners get is that they often come back within three to six months and say, the team member I've got with you is better than 75% of the employees I've ever hired anywhere in the world. It's like, that, that's right, because you've gone through a proper process yeah. in selecting someone who is going to be perfect in your life, not just in your business, but in your life. That's so powerful. And, and, and what, is, what does that say, uh, Brian, about the life because I you know I know we're lovely human beings and so we're obviously concerned with uh, you know the life of uh, the VA so what tell us what what that looks like what does the life of a VA look like yeah no different to us so <laughs> when, when 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 business owners are interviewing the candidates and they're trying to get to know them you know the candidates just gonna say yeah look you know I, I watched what were we talking about early Paul before we Click on record. I think there was a, there's a oh, Netflix series. some Netflix thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. They just talk about that, or they talk about you know which Aussie rules football team they're following, or which NBA basketball team they're following, or you know which movie blockbuster movie they just saw at the cinemas. And often the Philippines get the blockbuster movies two months before we do in Australia, and sometimes in the US and the UK. <laughs> So they're just talking about all the normal things. Oh yeah, like I went and got a Starbucks coffee this morning before work, and it's like. Oh, there's no difference between see, us. No, see, no, that, that's no. really interesting, right? That's really interesting because, you know, I think that people would would see, oh, the reason that, you know, I'm going to hire a VA, for example, um, and we need to remember, I mean, what you just said is this, we need to remember that a VA is not virtual. We need to remember that a VA is a real person, right? They're not some sort yeah. of virtual object, right? They're the real person. Um, but... Uh, what you what you you just said was that um, there's a how should I say it there's a there's a, it's it, again it's about the relationship not the not the transaction uh, that's it really uh, is. That, that, that's going on right so so does that mean you know because the typical thing right that people go through is they have to go through well I got these um, repetitive things I have to do you know I have to do the email in the morning I have to do this I have to do this I've got to do this and this and this and you know i don't want to do any repetitive things anymore right so yeah. is it, is it can it does it sort of start there but then sort of blossom out is that what you're saying it, it does um if we go back this there's two there's two approaches the first approach is those five tasks that the business owner hates doing now they might mm -hmm. not be the repetitive tasks oh okay okay but but, Got it. but when a business owner can get rid of those five tasks how much do they fall in love with this new team member they've hired? Because this team member's doing these five tasks they hated doing. Now, after 
after you go through those five, and some of them might be repetitive, they might be answering emails, booking a calendar, they might be doing some customer service. Once you get past those first five that they hate doing though, then we may look at, okay, well, what are the things that you do the most that really are repetitive okay. that you really shouldn't be doing anymore? Got it. By this stage, the business owner has fallen so much in love with their team member. <laughs> the amount of training and care and instruction they're going to give this new team member now because they just love them and they're seeing personal benefit back with lower stress, lower anxiety, more energy throughout the day they're going to be more inclined to train the person on the minutiae of the detail of those got repetitive it. tasks. Got it, got it, got it. Well, and with that in mind, Brian, does it mean that, I mean, because, does it mean though that there are particular types of business that you find, you know, are, are shall we say, more suited to the, the VA environment or is it much broader than we might think? I haven't actually, I have not found a business yet that um, or an industry even, that VAs aren't suited to. Um, considering, you know, the Philippines have got 100 million people that live there. Yeah, we um, tend to forget that sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And they have a higher uh, percentage of um, people going through university than even America, Australia and the UK do. Because as a developing nation, they see their way out of being a developing nation through education, education and job opportunity. Got it, got it. So it's it's a total paradigm shift with the sort of intellect and ability and the, the career growth that these team members are going for. Um, yeah. Yeah, all combined. Of course, you, you're getting involved in this in all sorts of interesting ways. And so, um, I, I was thinking of this question, uh, which I, uh, if you don't want me to ask you this question, you, you can say, I don't want you to ask me to answer ask this question. But do you get like weird things, like unusual things that, that people ask you that you go, oh my God, I never thought I'd get that when I started this? Everything. Ah, uh, yes. And, that's, <laughs> and that's, that's the part of the fun of the journey of being in business, isn't it? You get asked the strangest things. So it's usually to do with, I think, the clientele of the business owner. So if the business owner has, I'll give you my weirdest one. So um, one of our business owners in I got, Sydney. I got the sense this could be. This could be. <laughs> uh, so I think the, the bulk of their clients um, are lesbian, gay, along those lines. Right. And so, and all of their team members in Sydney were all female except for one. And they said, Brian, can we please hire males? And not only males, can at least one or two of them be gay? <laughs> and it's like, of course you can. It's, 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 but in Australia, we can't ask for that, right? Well, you, like, exactly, yeah. yeah. No, you can't ask for that in Australia. But in the Philippines, you can. You can actually put it specifically in the job ad. You know, please be this age range. Please be this whatever. <laughs> Oh, um, what a what a good reason! Uh, <laughs> what a good reason for getting VAs. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I, I've had on the uh, like equally, I've had people say, "Look, can you make sure they're Christian? You know, I'm Christian, my family's Christian, or my friends are Christian. Right. I really want a team member that's Christian." Right. It's like, of course, how how Christian? You know, rather than just be Christian, how Christian do you want them to be? Right. You know, do you want them reading the Bible in every lunch break, Christian? Because yeah. we have those people. Right. So I mean, it's interesting what, what that comes back to, and what I'm what I'm getting from this is this. Uh, you mentioned you know this sort of cultural fit that it's. I think the way you said it was, so that they want to be part of the family, right? And and that is such an interesting perspective, I think, on the, the you know the whole VA thing. I mean, it you know, probably starts out in a, in a way of how can I quote unquote use someone to do something, right? But mm. then clearly your perspective is no, 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 no. This is like a, a together a, a together thing. Where, where do you see this, this leading? I mean, do you see that more and more businesses are, are going to be uh, exploring, shall we say, this, this whole thing around VAs, particularly uh, as, as a result of, say, things like, uh, you know, the pandemic and things like that. What, what's, what, what do you see on that? I, I see it being a tidal wave that's just started. 
you know, yeah. the earthquake happened, there's been some tectonic shift and a small wave has begun. And, and that probably happened around, let's say, 13 years ago with someone like Tim Ferriss, where, what did he coin, oh, the, like the, the lifestyle? Four, the four hour work week. Yeah, yeah that's like, right, yeah, that's yeah. right. And, you know, he, it was a phrase he coined, like the lifestyle entrepreneur or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And and from there, you know, there's been this drip feeding of information that's been coming to business owners and more and more and more, where it's almost like, why wouldn't you now do this? Um, in this time, in this place with COVID, in this time, this place with the internet and internet speeds, um, why wouldn't you? For me personally, the biggest benefit I that I actually got was being such an introvert, I struggled with my energy throughout the day when I was in an office with team members and every five minutes they'd come and ask me a question. And I really struggled because my brain couldn't cope with so much stimulus all day. Oh, when we went a virtual, fascinating insight. Wow, that's a fascinating I got to sit insight. for two hours and just do good, solid, productive work. And then I'd have an hour where people could ask me questions. But, but having that ability to just do internal, productive, good quality work that clients would then enjoy, um, that's the biggest benefit I got. Wow, that, that is fascinating. Brian, you, you've, you've opened up, you know, a whole, for me, a whole different, I mean, I thought I knew what this is about, right? <laughs> but you've opened up, you know, a completely uh, different way uh, of, of thinking about it, which has been totally pleasurable. The one thing that always, can, well, not always, but frequently comes up for me, and it may well in this particular uh, time that we're together. And I just want to ask you a question that will prevent me feeling this way afterwards, right? So what actually happens is this. I, I, I'm not sure whether you ever have this situation where you, you know, you're talking with someone and you, know, you say your farewells, and, and then you, you walk in like, oh, I should have asked him this question. Oh my God, I should have asked him this question, right? So putting yourself in that frame right now, right? what question should I have asked you? I'm trying to, I know the topic. I'm not sure of how to phrase the question, but you've, you've asked it in a way. It was to do with outsourcing and tasks. So people trying to outsource tasks. Yeah. Um, if I could, in, so the, I'll give you the answer, but I can't give you the question. The answer <laughs> That's good. Give you the answer is really good. That's okay. Is that I don't want anyone, any business owner ever to think about ever outsourcing their tasks to someone because it's the entire wrong way of thinking about getting your life back, making more money, improving your health, improving your relationship with your spouse and children. What I would rather people think about is going and finding someone who they can fall in love with in their business. And that person falls in love with them and their business so that they're treating them like a highly valued team member that's doing highly valued work that the business owner doesn't do anymore so that they get all of that benefit back. If they treat the person as a task doer and that they're outsourcing their problems to someone else to take care of, happen, is it? yeah. it's not going to happen. It will fail within six months and they'll think that this whole outsourcing thing doesn't work because it doesn't if you have the frame of mind of outsourcing your problems and outsourcing your tasks. Brian, so. that, right there, right there, that is one of the most insightful things that I've ever heard anyone say uh, about, I don't know, really, about the, about the whole income VA thing. So um, I want to thank you for opening up a, you know, a, a very, for, for me and hopefully for everyone who's joining us, a very, very different way of thinking about this important thing that we now have to enable us, as I guess you would put it, not just to run better businesses, but better lives. And that better lives cuts both ways as well. Brian, it's been an absolute delight sharing this time with you. Um, and I, I get the feeling that we probably should do it more often as well because I'm sure there's so many other insights that you have. But for now, Brian, thank you so much for being here. It's been an absolute delight to take the time.